High definition re-releases are a double-edged sword. On the one hand, they offer players old and new a chance to re-experience classic games on modern technology. On the other, they have a tendency to hold a magnifying glass up to whatever issues they might have had when they first launched. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD represents Nintendo's first foray into HD remastering, and technically it's a resounding success. Unfortunately for them, a lot has happened in video games in the 10 years since Wind Waker first came out, and its pacing issues are more apparent now than they've ever been. The first thing you'll probably notice is just how vibrant everything looks. When the Wind Waker first released on the GameCube, Nintendo decided to gamble on an animated aesthetic over a more realistic approach, and it paid off in spades. And with the HD treatment, the Wind Waker looks better than ever. Link's eyes are more expressive, streams of jet blue water lap at the side of your boat, puffs of smoke swirl in the air as baddies fall to your sword. Even after 10 years, the Wind Waker is still one of the coolest, most stylish looking games ever created. You'll notice a few bouts of slowdown when tons of effects all go off at once, or a split second of draw distance pop in while sailing, but these moments are few and far between. Graphically, the Wind Waker HD is in a class of its own. The Wii U edition of the Wind Waker adds a ton of new features that help make it much more accessible and navigable than ever before. Items are a mere touch away. A quick swipe on the gamepad will allow you to equip yourself without even pausing. The gamepad's internal gyroscope allows for minute aiming adjustments, and having a persistent map on the gamepad screen allows you to instantly chart a course to whatever destination you like, without fumbling through pause menus. It's all incredibly user-friendly, and greatly streamlines the Wind Waker's pause screens. In addition to these control improvements comes a couple of gameplay additions that try to help alleviate some of the original's pacing issues. You start with the ability to hold 500 rupees instead of 200, meaning you don't have to run and throw your money down the drain nearly as frequently. Also, you'll find a new swift sail in the auction house. The sail increases your boat's speed by 25%, and keeps the wind at your back the entire time you're using it. It makes navigating the massive oceans a bit less time-consuming and frustrating than it was 10 years ago. Less frustrating is still frustrating, however, and the Wind Waker's pacing problems are still as present as they were when the game first released 10 years ago. The first act of your adventure is similar to other conventional Zelda titles, and adheres to the overworld and dungeon formula fairly closely. Once you hit the second act, the game opens up tremendously, allowing you to fully explore its oceans in order to tackle its non-linear objectives. The problem is that it quickly turns into a complete slog, requiring numerous back and forth trips through the mostly empty waters. The Triforce quest is still here, much maligned even when the Wind Waker first released, though Nintendo has wisely truncated it, if only slightly. In the original version, this was a three-part quest. The first part required that you find one of eight special charts within a secure dungeon. The second part required you to go to a special location to have Tingle translate that chart for 398 rupees. Then lastly, you have to go and actually find the Triforce piece in a sunken treasure chest. Now, you'll only have to do that for three of the eight total Triforce pieces. The other five are hidden within the first step of this whole process. While definitely quicker, it still doesn't help that most of them are hidden within fetch quests or endless waves of the same handful of enemies in succeedingly larger groups. It felt like padding then, and it feels even worse now. Nintendo has done a phenomenal job bringing one of the most beloved Zelda games into the HD era, and they've made a ton of changes that help mitigate some of its largest issues without fundamentally changing the entire game. It's still worth playing, and its biggest issues can't hold back one of the most charming and unconventional Zelda games in years. If you're willing to power through some unfortunate pacing, you'll still get to experience a fantastic and wondrous adventure of epic proportions, upscaled for the modern era.